Hi, my name is Frederick Chipkin. In this class, I'm going to be teaching you how to create plants using Adobe Photoshop. Now, in the first part of the lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to create a basic printed plant. Then, we're going to dive right into the main part of the lesson. We'll be showing you how to create a plant with a weave. And then, I'll be showing you how to recreate the twill and structure of a plant from a reference which is a very common task for textile designers and prepares the plant so they can be easily recolored. I'm going to be showing you a simple way to recolor a plant using the paint bucket tool. However, I strongly suggest that before you take this class, that you take my class called Adobe Photoshop for Textile Design Part 2, Color Reduction, and Adobe Photoshop for Textile Design Part 3, Coloring Your Design. Simply put, every design is different and provides different challenges. And these two classes will give you several options that will help you color your plaid or any textile design for that matter very easily and very accurately. Now on this page I provided a link so that you can download your practice image that goes with this class. So pause the lesson, get your practice image, and we'll continue. Don't forget to save this file to a location on your computer where you can easily find it again. So creating a basic printed plaid has just a few very easy steps. First, we're going to create the warp. Then we're going to create the fill. And then we're going to combine the warp and fill with the use of layers. So the first thing we're going to do is create the warp. And to do that, we're going to start out by creating a new canvas. So let's go to File and drag down to New. And in the dialog box, which pops up, enter these settings. The resolution should be 254 pixels per inch. Make sure that you're in RGB color mode and that the background contents should be white. Let's make the width seven inches and the height seven inches. Then click OK. Let's place this here. Now we're going to create several color boxes using the rectangular marquee tool. For the sake of expediency, I've already chosen the colors I'm going to be using in this plaid, and they're right over here, all ready to go in the swatches panel. So let's choose the rectangular marquee tool from the tool panel, and make sure that new selection is selected here in the options bar. Feather is a zero. and the style is normal. Let's select our main color from the swatches panel, and then let's draw a nice rectangle horizontally across our screen like so. Then let's go to Edit, Fill, make sure that foreground is selected, and click OK. Then select the next color in the swatches panel that's going to go into your warp and select another rectangle within the warp. And let's fill this guy in. And then just keep selecting rectangles the same way I just showed you and keep filling them in with black. And then keep repeating these steps for the rest of the colors in the warp.
Okay, now it's time to get rid of the white background. So let's place the rectangular marquee tool around the colors you just created and notice that the rectangular selection is touching within the colors on the top and bottom sides of the selection and not touching any of the jaggedy edges. And notice that I left some of the white within the left and right hand sides of the selection. Now we're going to deselect the white and remove it from the selection. So let's select the magic wand tool, select the subtract from selection function here in the options bar, make sure that the tolerance is zero, and anti lies should be unchecked, and contiguous should be unchecked also. Then click on the white in the design, so the white is deselected. So let's click on image, then go down to crop. Let's save this image into a folder on our computer where we can easily find it again. Let's name it Warp 1 and then click on Save. Now, in the second step, we're going to be creating the fill. The fill is nearly identical to the warp, except we're going to be creating a vertical sequence of boxes instead of a horizontal one. So first, we're going to create a new canvas by clicking on File, then going down to New, and then double check the settings. Width and height are seven inches. Resolution is 254 pixels per inch. We're in RGB color mode. Next to background contents is white. OK, let's click OK. Let's move this here. Let's select our main color from the swatches panel. And then select the rectangular marquee tool from the tool panel. Let's double check our tool settings from the options bar. And let's draw a nice vertical rectangle on our screen like so. Then edit and then fill. Click OK. Then in the same way we created the colored boxes and the warp, we're going to be creating colored boxes for the fill. Except, of course, this time we're drawing the boxes one on top of the other instead of from side to side. Now we're going to get rid of the white background the same way as we did in the warp. We're going to be placing the rectangular marquee tool around the colors we had just created. Remember, the marquee selection should only be touching the colors and not the jaggedy edges. And I'm leaving a little bit of white on the ends over here. Then choose a magic wand tool, double check that subtract from selection is selected, Tolerance is zero, and anti lies and contiguous are not checked. Then, as we did with the warp, we click on the white. Then, click on image and then go down to crop. Then, let's save this image into the same folder where we saved the warp. Let's name it Fill1 and save. Now make sure that you keep this selected. And then let's go to Edit, Define Pattern. 
Notice that because we already saved this as fill1, that the name is already here. Now click on OK. And let's close this file. Now, because we haven't done so yet, I'm going to define the pattern for the warp. Let's go to File, Open, and open Warp 1. Select, All, Edit, Define Pattern. Because we saved this previously as Warp 1, the name Warp 1 is already here. So we just click OK, and then just close the file. OK, so now it's time to put everything together. So let's create our canvas. Let's go to File New. Make sure that it's 254 pixels per inch, RGB color mode, background contents white. Let's make the width 8 inches and the height 9 inches. Click OK. Then go to Edit, Fill. Next to Contents, I'm going to be changing the foreground color to Pattern. Change the custom pattern to Warp 1, which is the last pattern that you created. Then click OK. Now let's create a new layer by clicking on the Create New Layer icon in the Layers panel. Click on Edit, Fill, then click here and change the custom pattern to Fill 1, which should be the second to last pattern you created. Then click OK. Now take note that the warp is filling the background layer and the fill is filling layer 1 which is above the background layer, and is set to Normal. Now let's swipe over these numbers here and change the opacity to 50%. And like magic, we have a printed plant. Hmm. And pretty easy and rewarding to do once you know the steps. Now, sometimes for the sake of visualizing plaid, Instead of creating a plaid using transparency, you may want to create a plaid with a stipple. To make a stippled plaid, in the Layers panel, just change the word Normal to Dissolve. And presto, we have another way, and might I add another very easy way, of visualizing a plaid. So let's save this guy. Let's name it Beauty Plaid V1. And save. 